Well, hello, good people. It seems like low profile gaming keyboards are rising in popularity, but why? What is it about having a shorter keyboard body and lower keycaps that improves the overall user experience? So first of all, low profile is not a specification. It's not standardized meaning across keyboard brands. You might have a chunky frame, but low profile keycaps. You might have low profile switches, but a large keyboard body or a keyboard that is designed from the ground up to be as low profile as possible but also quite massive. So let's take these five low profile keyboards that I've collected over time and see exactly why a perfect low profile keyboard does not exist. The GamerStorm Castle 240EX gives you a peace of mind with anti-leak tech inside by reducing pressure buildup as temperatures fluctuate. Plus, this is one of the best looking pump designs with the removable mirror cover and swappable logo pieces with full addressable RGB support for that extra bling. Check it out below. So the collection for today includes the Tesoro Gram MX1, the Rockout Vulcan 120 AMO, the Corsair K70 RGB Mark II Low Profile, the wireless Logitech G915, and the Coolmaster SK630. And I guess it's an expectation that low profile keyboards are going to be more expensive as they most definitely sell less volume, so that LP premium is real. The common denominator among all these keyboards is of course some form of low profile element. The K70 and the SK630 for example use cherry low profile switches that are much smaller in comparison to standard MX switches. This means the keyboard frame on the K70 is thinner compared to normal K70 plus the slim style keycap reduce the overall height of the keyboard to 29 millimeters instead of 40 millimeters with standard MX switches. This also means low profile switches have less travel distance and feel completely different. For one, the low profile speed switch is incredibly quiet. It's almost like there's some dampening happening when you bottom out with a bit more resistance than your standard size MX speed switch. The low profile red switch, for example, registers at 1.2 millimeters instead of two millimeters on full size MX. So that is definitely one advantage of low profile switches if you prefer faster actuation and less travel. Cooler Master uses a similar idea with low profile switches and shorter keycaps, although the flat nature of them without any grooves is a disadvantage. It makes the keyboard look and feel bulky despite having the same keycap height as the K70, especially because the entire frame is raised. If only the front was slimmer to lower the entire profile, but to me, it's actually the flat keycaps that ruin an otherwise promising form factor. The Tesoro Gram MX1 takes a different approach to low profile by reducing the size of the frame itself. The keycaps are standard, the MX switches too, but the flatter design of the frame helps to minimize the footprint and appear low profile, like the angular front section of that metal plate, small forehead, and tiny side sections. Even though it is the highest keyboard among these five, I would still consider it to be low profile. The Rokat Vulcan is another unique low profile example with a thin frame and the coolest keycap design that I've seen. It's floating style plus the thin and narrow format of the keycaps helps to minimize the visual bulkiness of the keyboard. Also the front row of the keys is curved that improves the ergonomics of the entire layout. It is kind of brilliant. The switches however are not low profile but it's interesting how all these other elements give the keyboard that low profile character. Now some users in our community post have experienced issues with the switches and I'm reading on similar switch problems from user reviews on Amazon and that is just not acceptable for $150. I wanted to save the best for last as the G915 from Logitech was designed with low profile in its DNA. It's the thinnest mechanical keyboard that I've used at only 22 millimeters and here the frame, the switches and the keycaps are all part of that low profile game and this thing is wireless too. But it's crazy expensive at $150 I really don't know who would buy it. I've also accidentally broken a few keycap legs when removing them from the switch, but the structure is impressive. The frame is almost non-existent, the keycaps are almost half the height of the K70 keycaps, and the switches have the least travel distance of 2.7 millimeters with the actuation point happening at 1.5. It honestly feels very impressive to have that much travel distance on something that is thin, especially because the body is not angled, so when it's on your desk, it feels like it's part of the desk instead of being on top of it. I feel like that is one major benefit of having such flat, low profile keyboards, and that is wrist placement, which is more comfortable for me when the keycaps are closer to the surface. You don't require a wrist rest to even out the wrist angle because the higher the keyboard, the more strain you'll experience. And typing on the K70 low profile or the G915 is incredibly comfortable, and you can see the difference a slim profile makes on my wrists.
And it made me realize that the low profile keyboard isn't supposed to be a tiny keyboard and it's not supposed to like minimize the footprint of the keyboard itself on the desk. Instead, the focus is on comfort and minimizing that visual bulk of either the keycaps or the frame itself. And unfortunately, we're not at the point of having good variety when it comes to low profile designs yet. They're all still full size layouts with either chunky cables, insane price points, and very few switch options too. And if you guys have any suggestions for a low profile keyboard that you think is worth it, let me know in the comments. As for my perfect low profile keyboard, I would have the G915, but in a TKL form factor, MX Speed, low profile switches, and the keycaps from the Vulcan. But I'm interested to hear if you care about low profile keyboards at all, let me know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, check out this other relevant content. All the links for products will be listed in the description. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you in the next video. Stopped right in time for the construction to begin. Yeah. You guys hear that? Ugh.